Hi everyone, today I am doing some meal prep for beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you check out some of my other videos. And if you are returning, welcome back. I hope you like today's video. Okay, so I've been doing the egg fast all week. Today's my last day. So I am getting ready for tomorrow where I'm starting BBBE, beef, bacon, butter, and eggs, which is really basically carnivore. So I'm making a couple of my favorite meats. I've been eating eggs all week. I found a rack of lamb that I got half price in the back of my freezer, so I thought, I'm having that for dinner tonight. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, so I did my five days of egg fast and have lost six pounds, so I'm quite happy about that. I'm kind of almost where I was at before December began, so happy, happy. Um, so, lamb, uh, rack of lamb for dinner, and I am making this to eat all, all week just as sort of something hot. And it's a beef rib stew. Uh, I really love that and I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. The other thing I am making is my own carnivore crisps. I did get a little bit of a head start on it today already. Um, if you don't know what carnivore crisps are, they are delicious. They come in these little bags. However, I am in Canada. I ordered three bags of these and I paid $53. Um, by the time I, I paid for the shipping and uh, exchange rate and all that stuff. So ever since I did that, I thought there's got to be a better way. Now, some wonderful subscriber did send me two bags and that's, you know, I'm just finishing off this bag. So thank you very much, uh, anonymous donor. Um, I really appreciated that. But honestly, it was pretty easy to make my own at a fraction of the cost. These are these are lamb uh, carnivore crisps, or <laughs> actually I shouldn't call them that because they're, they're Anita crisps, lamb. I'm going to make ribeye crisps. So I'm gonna do that first. Um, I'm gonna get all this other stuff out of the way and we will do these other items. As soon as I get the meat crunchies into the oven, I will start on the next thing. So, but I wanna tell you how I find it easiest to make them. You obviously want to have a very thin piece of meat. So let me show you what one in here looks like. So it is super thin. The only ingredients on these carnivore crisps are whatever meat, they have different kinds like chicken, uh, this one's ribeye, um, they have sirloin, uh, pork, loin, like all kinds of them. So it is a very thin meat and there's Redmond salt. So likewise, the ones I made, a very thin meat and Redmond salt. That's all there is, it's, it, it's crispy just like the real ones. So how did I do that? I am going to tell you, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna make another tray. Well, this will probably be a couple of trays. So the problem is you wanna get that thin meat. So the way I solved that problem, because I don't have a meat slicer. So, that, so that's one choice. If you have a meat slicer and you can set it to paper thin, that's your best route. You could buy a roast or something like that at a butcher shop and have them slice it into super, super thin. I saw these, um, we had hot pot one night and you can buy these packages of thinly sliced meat in the, um, in like a Korean shop or an Asian supermarket. And we have, we have tons of those here where I live. I live uh, near Vancouver, um, out in the burbs. But basically, they sell these trays of meat for hot pot, and look how thin they are. That is actually the perfect 
thinness. So I thought, oh, I'll buy those. So what I'm going to do is, um, so this was this package was $18, and it's about a pound of meat. I'm going to cook it and then weigh it to see what we get because this package is 1.5 ounces and I figured out it was $17.66 a package for 1.5 ounces. So I'm really curious. Um, so this was, this ended up being about three ounces of meat, but it was a smaller package than this. So let's see where we end up cost-wise on this. So, oh, I'm gonna set my oven. All I did was bake them at 350 for about half an hour to get it like that. Uh, I put some Redmond salt on it. So there's my salt. I've got, like, how big is this? Like about 11 by 17 pan, parchment paper on top, and I'm just gonna lay these out. These are huge. I didn't realize how big they were. Those ones were, they started out much smaller. I am definitely going to have to make a couple of batches. Now they will shrink considerably, so I put them really close to each other. Maybe I'll cut one in half so that I can, so that I can squeeze one into the small space. Okay, so there's, there's the first one. Don't know if all these trays will fit into my oven all at the same time. Okay, so I have half the package exactly out. So I'm gonna put the rest in the fridge and do them later because these three trays are all I'm gonna be able to fit in my oven, um, but I can do these later. And with half the package, I can just um, divide everything in, in half, cost-wise and weight-wise, and calculate it that way, so. Okay, so what I want to do is sprinkle some salt on them now. I'm just using uh, Redmond's fine salt. If you have seasoning salt or whatever, you can do that too. Now don't put too much on because these will shrink and then it'll end up being too salty. So salt, just a little less than what you think it should be. You can always add more later if it's not enough. Those are going in the oven at 350 and I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes. That's about how long that took and we'll see where we're at. Now let's talk about these. These are one of my favorites. This is called rib finger meat. I'm sure I've done it before in, in a prep video, but I like it so much and I had two of them in my freezer. So I just wanna show you what it's like when you buy it at the store. So at the store, it comes in this package. They call it beef rib finger meat boneless. And it's about $10 a pound, roughly. They give prices here in kilograms, but just mentally calculating it. It is worth every penny um, because the rib fingers are full of collagen and so I get some really good beef jello out of the deal as well. I'm going to, I usually do this in a slow cooker, um, but I, I wanna go to bed early tonight. <laughs> so I'm gonna cook them in the instant pot and save, you know, all this, uh, like I'm gonna save this for eating throughout the week, this week. Um, so basically it comes in these long fingers. I just chop them up into bite-sized pieces as though uh, like about the size of stewing meat. So that's about, uh, these packages were pretty much the same, about three pounds. So I'm gonna put this one back. You can do this in a slow cooker if you don't have an instant pot. If you don't have an instant pot or a slow cooker, put it in a pan with foil and cover it and braise it in the oven for a couple of hours, or a Dutch oven would work as well. Cook it low and slow, and uh, it'll turn out, like, the, the reason I like to use the Instant Pot, for, it's for speed, and it's also super tender. With the crock pot or the slow cooker, it is super tender, but it takes all day, which sometimes is okay if I'm using my Instant Pot for other things. And in the oven, it takes, I think, two to three hours would, would do it. So I'm putting in two cups of water. You don't need to put, I've made this without water before. 
You don't need to uh, use that much water, but I like to get broth with this because it turns to jello and then I use that for making soup. So I'm going to just dump them in here. I'm not gonna brown them or anything. Just let them go in there. And I'm going to just use some Redmond salt. Probably about a half a teaspoon, I think. I can always add more later. The beef, maybe I'll add a little more now. The beef, uh, bacon, butter, and egg is minimal seasonings. So mostly salt, just salt, I think, and, uh, and meat. So I'm going to turn this on. Make sure the vent is set to sealed. Um, and I'm just going to use the meat stew setting, which is right here, and let that go. So I'll be back in the next segment where I set up for the lamb, the rack of lamb. Okay, so uh, it's only been about 15 minutes, but these are looking ready to me, this one this one tray. So I'm taking these out. Um, sometimes, like, so I have to uh, tell you that the trays sometimes make a difference. And all, I've got all these different trays in there, and some do cook faster than others. So I'm putting this on paper towels to drain and it'll probably just be a couple more minutes before the other trays are ready. But, the, you know, they're, at, they're quite, sm um, like you can see how much they shrunk compared to the way they were. So I'm just going to check the other tray. This one looks good as well, maybe. I mean, they've shrunk to at least half their size. I'm gonna let that stay in for a couple more minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go five more minutes, uh, and then those other two trays will be ready as well. Okay, so the rack of lamb is up next. I'm just drying it off. I took it out of the package, and I'm just uh, getting all the moisture off with paper towels. And there we go. So let me just get rid of those. I am going to put it in the air fryer today. Um, I often do bake these things and I do have a recipe that is identical um, for baking times is what I'm going to use in the air fryer. And it, it's one of those recipes where if you just follow the instructions, you can set it and forget it and it turns out perfect. That's what I'm doing today, except I'm doing it in the air fryer because I just like using my air fryer. So I'm just gonna put, get like a little small, I don't know, about a, at least a good teaspoon of kosher salt. And I'm going to just, just rub. Now the recipe for lamb that's on my um, website, I mean, it uses rosemary and lemon and all kinds of good stuff. But we're doing salt only, so um, it's still gonna be delicious. So I'm going to put it in the air fryer at 375 for 18 minutes. I've, I've done this before a couple of times. 18 minutes is perfect for me. It should come out medium rare. But I just, uh, I just wanted to say that if there's anyone here who kind of lives local to me, um, if you have Save On Foods, Two or three times a year, save on foods, and you like lamb, but two or three times a year, they put these rack of lambs on special buy one, get one. And usually the limit is six. So um, if you like these, watch for those sales and get six. <laughs> Cause that's, I mean, the price has really gone up. I mean, I guess of all meat, but I really noticed it with the lamb and uh, it, maybe it's because it comes from New Zealand, I, I don't know. But I used to pay about $11 for one of these and uh, now it's it's 15 or 16, like it's it's really gone up a lot. So 
Anyways, uh, this is going, I'm going to get the air fryer started. Okay, so we're just gonna let that heat up. This is going in. I normally cook it with the fat side up, like just like how you see it here. Okay, it is done. I'm going to take it out. So I'm going to let it rest for a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and uh, then come back and slice it into pieces and we'll see, we'll see how we did there. We'll be back in the next segment. Okay, we're back and everything is almost ready. I'm, uh, this uh, pot is just counting down. So while that's happening, let's talk about the meat crisps. This uh, came out to three and a half ounces. And so I calculated the per ounce price. And by making my own, I saved over, I think I saved, um, hang on. Wait one second because I completely screwed up that calculation. So let me go over this again. Um, my cost as a Canadian turned out to be $11.78 per ounce of those carnivore crisps. I bought one pound of ribeye for $18. It was thinly sliced and it yielded seven ounces. I had put half the package in the fridge because I didn't have enough trays. And when I did the first calculation, I completely forgot about that. Plus I did it wrong anyways. So the new, the price doing it on my own was $2.57 per ounce. $3.86 cents would be the cost of one one and a half ounce bag. So I actually saved $64.46. So there you have it. So it is definitely worthwhile to make your own, um, but are they as good? So let me, this is ribeye, this is ribeye. So let me give that a try. They both have only Redmond salt. So. I just wanted to remind myself what this tasted like. Okay. I mean, it's very good. They taste like the same meat. This one's not very crunchy. So, I mean, some of these are so crunchy they're falling apart. So let me just, you know, you can tell. Oh. <clears throat> Pippi heard me. <laughs> okay. They're super crunchy, so maybe this one, I don't know. Okay, so they were in three different trays, three different pans. That that one wasn't so crunchy, but the, the rest of these are, so I'm not quite sure what, what happened with just that one. Who knows? But you just keep it in a little bit longer, and it's crunchy. And uh, the dogs are going a little insane. So, um, as far as keeping them, uh, I thought what I would do is, I've got a bag of lamb here. That's the one I made earlier. I thought it would be probably good just to keep them in a bag. Um, the one, the carnivore crisp ones, once you open this bag, it says to refrigerate it. Refrigerate after opening. So I, I'm thinking that that probably is gonna be the case with this too. There must, I mean, there's no preservatives in there or anything, so it kind of makes sense to refrigerate it. And so there we go. I've got, I've got a lot of carnivore crisps. I need a crisps. I've got a lot of meat crisps and a fraction of the price. So happy about that. So that should be good snacking food for us, right, Pippi? Okay, so let's take a look at this lamb. 
I can hardly wait to cut that. I sure hope I, I was going by memory on the time, so I sure hope I got it right. But even, even if it's uh, more than medium, I'll actually be okay with it. I think it'll be very good. I'm probably not cutting it in the exact right spot. Yeah, probably 16 minutes would have been better, but I'm, I'm eating it. Okay, so let's get a close up of that. I think it's going to be delicious. Okay, it's got a nice crispy skin on it. I'm just gonna take a bite. Give it a try. Mm. That is so tender. So 375, 18 minutes. I'm gonna do it 16 minutes next time. Um, but it sure is delicious. I'm certainly not going to turn my nose up at it. So let's, um, let's see. Spin natural releasing for eight minutes. Oh. <clears throat> I probably should have let it go for 10. <laughs> 10 minutes is usually how long I, I let it natural release. I want to dig into those lamb chops. Okay, look at that. So with this, what I will do is I will scoop out the meat into a storage container and let the liquid cool down and then that will go into a jar in the fridge. And tomorrow it will be beef jello, which I really like for making soup. So um, this is gonna be great. It, um, I'm just gonna see if I can grab one of these little guys. It's gonna be very hot though. I mean, they're falling apart, so they're not that easy to grab. It looks so hot. That melts in your mouth. So if you can find those rib fingers, buy them. They are so worth it. Um, I just, I, I mean, I could eat it every day when doing carnivore, so. Anyways, so uh, I think we're gonna wrap up this video. There's just way too much good food here. So we've got, we've got the lamb that's going to be for dinner. This will be for tomorrow. The meat crisps will be just something that, you know, I can reach for if I need a snack. And here is Teddy, hello, hello. I'm gonna let him have a little piece of lamb, see what he thinks. Here comes Pippi too, so let's see what they think. Okay, sit. Yes, that's right. There you go, sit. Teddy had a little lamb. Yep. What do you think? Oh, you're laying down. Now you're doing preemptive laying down. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get some more later, okay? So, um, oh, I wanted to say things are starting to uh, happen quickly around here. Uh, there's a move coming up and uh, I have to start packing stuff, which means um, some of this is going to disappear. And so probably what you're going to see over the next little while is less videos from me. I'm sorry, um, but it's just, you know, have to, have to pack, have to move. Um, but I'll hopefully be back to a regular schedule after all that happens. But the next few weeks are just going to be a little all over the place. Uh, I still will be around and I still will be doing some videos. They just won't be as frequent as they have been in the last week. Yes, you're going to get more. So uh, signing out, Teddy and Pippi. I uh, hope you guys uh, have a great week and we'll see you soon. Can you hear welcome? Oh, I hope. Ah, whatever. Ah, whatever. Hi, everyone. I'm Anita from... No, no, hi, everyone. <laughs> I got to stop calling them that. I might get in trouble. Don't. Don't focus on it.